Next, we're going to talk about the DigiConnect port X2 as a ZigBee coordinator. The Connect port X2 is a commercially available RF to Ethernet gateway. Now, what does that mean specifically? If you look back at how we've talked about ZigBee networks previously, you'll see that it, uh, at least for our purposes, tends to use a star type of structure where we have routers that are connected to a series of end nodes. All right. However, ultimately, we want to connect that all of those nodes to the Internet. Right, the World Wide Web or some sort of similar network. Now, what piece does that? At the center, we have a coordinator. That coordinator communicates wirelessly with any routers or end nodes that exist on the network. It also can have a Wi-Fi, or in this case, I think it uses a wired connection to the internet. And so any information that passes from an end node to any sort of internet-based resource has to follow this path, starting at the end node, jumping to the router, jumping to the coordinator, and then flowing through whatever internet connection the coordinator has. So that's what we mean by RF to Ethernet gateway. All right, so facilitates communication between and networking of XB radios and associated devices. It features an open source development environment in Python for design and implementation of advanced wireless networking solutions. Before one can use the Zigbee hardware, communication with the connect port must be established, and that's predominantly what we're going to be talking about here. How do we set up the, the DigiConnect port X2. Note that although other modes of operation exist, this work relies solely on uh, that associated with the Digi API application programming interface. Previous versions of any and all installers referred to below may be downloaded at this URL. And so this URL essentially, uh, I think, just leads to my Dropbox. And so you can, I mean, it wouldn't show up like this. It would show up as a web interface. But anyway, you can click here and uh, you can you can download installers and such. Okay, I don't want that to download, but I guess it's still going to do that. Anyway, so continuing. Um, but about this link right here, I strongly suggest that you just go ahead and download new versions of the installers. It really doesn't, it doesn't make much sense to use previous versions when newer ones are so readily available. Okay, so next we're going to talk about establishing communication with the Connect port X2. So we've numbered the steps here. Step one is to activate Telnet capability within Windows. Instructions may be found below. Essentially, you go into Windows features. You'll see there are some that are associated with Telnet, and you can simply click and turn those on. Next. We're going to install the ConnectWare application using this installer. You can download that from the Digi website, or you can use the link I've provided. And so here you can see a step-by-step -step progression of the installation process. Um, one, two, three, four, etc. I would refer to these pictures. I don't think there's anything that interesting going on. It's just agreeing to some service licensing, you know, terms and, and all that type of stuff. Now, some people, uh, meaning myself, uh, did experience trouble when trying to run the Connect where uh, sometimes it kicks back a Windows um, security uh, message, which you can override. I actually overrode it and it still worked. As you can see um, here, although I recommend that you go in and actually fix the problem. Okay, step three. We are going to need to install uh, either a 64 or 32 bit um, installer uh, for the real port software. Again, you can download that from the Digi website or you can download it from my URL, my Dropbox. Um, and then we are going to, that real port software is going to install our Digi device discovery tool. So we will double click on that. Once the application appears, we're going to click refresh view under the other tasks menu. So that would be right here. Next, uh, we want to ensure that the connect port X2 is discovered. It should be displayed 
within this the discovery tool as shown. Now I haven't gone into the details of how to physically set up the connect port X2, meaning how do we hook it up to the internet and how do we establish the connection with the with the PC and make sure that it's showing up here. The reason why I haven't done that is because it varies from model to model. There are different types of connect port that you can um, that you can buy. And so for better or for worse, I am going to have to leave a little bit of a question mark there and leave it up to you to solve that on your own. However, once you have this properly uh, set up and connected, which again, Digi provides great documentation for that, you should see it show up in the device discovery tool. Next, we're gonna right click on the connect port x2 device and choose open web interface this will bring up a web interface like that shown below now to go back to the previous subject just for one second i do want to clarify what i'm focusing on i'm trying to i'm trying to focus on the aspects of this setup that are most uniform to all different types of hardware that one may use and i am slightly focusing more on the software end of things this is not a course that is going to go into the the details of wiring things up and inserting Ethernet cables and things like that. But that being said, if there's a question that is really nagging people, I'll be more than happy to update the lecture and include that. All right, so we right click, we open web interface, and that brings us up something that looks like this. You can see here there are tons of options running down the left hand side of the screen, and we are going to talk about those in a second. All right, next we move on to configuring the XBS2 for AP mode communication and data acquisition of multiple analog signals. Now, what does that mean? Okay, a couple things that we need to touch upon here. First, we are using the S2 radio series two and not the series one as we did in one of the other videos. Number two, we are using the API communication mode, which means we're going to be uploading some Python code to the export, to the connect port, and controlling the communication path that way. And we are not going to be using point to point as we did in that series one example. And uh, data acquisition of multiple signals, I mean, this is really the, the application or the task that we're trying to achieve is. Um, again to acquire a couple of analog signals this is a pretty good uh starting point for iot internet of things or different types of cyber physical uh, applications obviously if you're building a sensor uh, acquiring signals is going to be a huge part of that all right so before an xb series 2 radio may communicate with the connect port it must be properly configured note that the series 1 radio does not support uh, any of this um, and as such, may only be used for direct radio-to-radio -radio or point-to-point -point communication. So this is, again, strictly dealing with the Series 2. All right, so we in insert the Series 2 radio into the Explorer dongle. We talked about that in one of the other videos. And attach it to the PC with XCTU installed. Again, this is all referring to the Series 1 video. Um, so you may want to take a look at that. In there, we explain what the Explorer dongle is. Uh, we talk about how to attach it to a PC, and we talk about installing the XCTU software. That is all within the Series 1 video, so you can check that out. This is an example of the dongle. Um, just to repeat, it's pretty simple. You have your XB Series 2 radio, and you simply insert that into the dongle, uh, which connects to the individual pins, and then that provides the USB connection that you can use for your PC. Next, we are going to click on the add a radio button. It looks like a radio with a plus on top of it. And it's at the top left of the main screen. We are going to use the radio parameters shown in the figure below. Okay, um, which I'm gonna talk about in just one second. Well, actually, why don't I talk about it now? Anyway, so we are adding a radio module. Uh, you can actually see the appropriate button is right there behind this other screen that's on top of it. And uh, we're going to set the 
parameters as shown here. I'm not going to go into too much detail about why we picked these parameters for a couple of reasons. Number one is that I'm trying to focus on the most important issues here, not make the videos too long and not go too, down too many rabbit holes. And so talking about why we choose these is maybe not important right here, right now. What I can say is if you're trying to get an application to work and you're trying to add this radio to your configuration, my experience is that these parameters will do fine. And you'll see that I, I'm going to use that explanation at several other points down below. Um, so next, once you have uh, added the radio module or set the parameters that it's going to search for, including the COM ports, if it finds the appropriate radio, you can then update the radio firmware. Normally what I'll do is just pick the ZB, which stands for Zigbee type of product family. Uh, you can either pick a router or an end device. There's lots of different choices here. They have slight differences. And uh, the firmware version, normally I just pick the newest one. The AT right here refers to the fact that it accepts AT commands. And we will talk about that a little bit below. Then you click finish and you are done. Okay, next. You are going to use the load default firmware settings button. It looks like a small lighthouse next to a building. You can see it down here. I'm sure it's not meant to be a lighthouse. I guess it's a factory. Not really sure. Um, anyway, uh, and that will reset the S2's configuration. Then we will update the radio parameters to mm -hmm match those shown below. This may be done manually or through the utilization of a pre-made radio profile. We will talk more about these parameters at a later time. Um, I have made a suitable profile available online using this link right here. All right, you can check that out. And uh, use that as a starting point if, um, if you think that helps. You can load that using the uh, this button right here, uh, the user profile uh, button. That looks like a person's head. Quickly going through some of these parameters, um, right, you have uh, no join time. This is essentially how long a parent waits uh, for children to join before it cuts off um, that value. We have it set to the maximum, which means essentially it never stops accepting new connections. Looking here, um, right, the, the power level is also another important one. Um, it's a little bit self-explanatory. You can set it to higher if you want to get more transmission and uh, reception power, but you're going to be uh, drawing more from your battery. There's also something called power mode, which you can enable boost. Uh, I think that's only an option on the Pro model, and that provides you some more uh, capability there in terms of transmission power. I think the other important parameters to take a look at are these, which are the I.O. settings. And so what you can see is I have decided to use D0 through D3, those pins, as A, D, C inputs. Okay, so they are analog inputs that are being converted to digital. And then the rest of this here, uh, I don't necessarily think is uh, super important. You can set the sampling rate if you want. I have it just set to a default, which is zero, which it doesn't, um, which just samples as quickly as it can. Um, and then you have some information about the firmware you're using. Again, uh, I, I, I can't... Um, you know, I can't uh, have an entire class on, on these parameters, so we have to cut off somewhere. All right. Now, uh, once these radio parameters are properly defined uh, or the profile is uploaded, you can click the right button, which looks like a pencil, to save these buttons, save these values to the onboard memory of the XB radio, uh, which essentially completes the configuration. All right. Next. Uh, using the Connect Port X2 web interface. So the Connect Port X2 web interface is the first line of communication between the user and the XP network. To display a list of all XP radios and devices on the network, you click on the XP network button under configuration. That is right here. 
Okay, this is the button. And then this will show all the devices that are connected to our network. So you can see here, I have uh, one coordinator, which is our X2 connect port. And I also have one router, which would be a, a X, XB series two um, radio. I think this is a pro. All right. And uh, above, we talked about how to bring up this screen, the web interface, uh, using the software that we installed. Now, if the desired radio does not appear in this list, you are going to want to click Clear List Before Discover, Discovery, and then che and, uh, that checkbox, and then Discover XB Devices button. So let's take a look up here. You can see uh, you have... Uh, clear list uh, before discovery and then discover XB devices right there. This should cause uh, the XB uh, to appear as a router of product, not produce, product type unspecified. Now, if you buy a radio off the shelf, it's not going to have a product type defined. You can define that in the firmware actually and, and come up with custom uh, product types, but uh, Digi sells their own sensors or devices. They have smart plugs, they have one that's called an LTH sensor, light temperature and humidity sensor. Um, and so if you're using one of those, then it'll show up as product type. Uh, the product type will be shown, otherwise you won't see any. Okay, and so in this case, I'm just using a, a radio, and so there's no product type that's going to be shown. And so again, you can see here, again, saying again too much, but you can see all the parameters that I used. And uh, this is uh, pretty similar to what I outlined above. So I'm not going to go through those. Again, if you have questions, um, you can shoot those over to me and I'll be more than happy to answer. All right, next. Next step here is going to be to access the Connect port X2 Intel Net. Why? The reason why is because this is how we are going to run our Python scripts. And this is what we refer to as the API mode, which simply means we are using the Digi-produced API application, application programming interface and those commands in order to perform more complex tasks. All right, so how do we do this? Um, right, so... Uh, Telnet allows us to execute a Python file that's uploaded to the connect port, and um, we must access the portal via Telnet. So Telnet is what allows us to actually execute an instruction set. Step one here is we establish a Telnet connection with the uh, connect port by bringing up the DOS command prompt. Uh, we type in Telnet and then the uh, address of the connect port. Uh, this will have to be replaced with the actual IP listed in the web interface. Again, I'll repeat, people always tell me, take these numbers off of my, um, my, my lessons. I'm not using these numbers anymore, so there, there's no really no damage that, that can be done. All this hardware uh, is, is not online, and the computers I use, they're, they're definitely not the same IP addresses. All right. Uh, if the connection is successful, what you'll see is that you'll get a prompt again. Uh, so uh, step two, uh, let's just assume for a second that we want to run code named hellodigiworld.py, Python code. And so what we would do is type Python and then the script name into the telnet command prompt, and that will generate a result. Now, we've skipped a step here because um, we're trying to explain why you need telnet, but we haven't actually uploaded this code to the connect port yet. If you go back above, you'll see here, there is a section here under applications um, that we will use in order to upload um, th this, th these API scripts or API based scripts to the connect port X2. <clears throat> but, that will be the subject of one of the other videos when we go into an actual example of using the Series 2 radio 
in uh, API mode. Uh, for now, we are gonna we're gonna cut here. Um, but I think that this did a great job of explaining what the role of the connect port is, the software that you need in order to get it up and running, and also just an overview of how the connect port works. And so in other sections, we'll get more into the details of how to build an application that uses the S2 radios in a more interesting way.